today. Melvin's going to be providing some um, introductory knowledge on rating and how it can improve your business, and, you know, improve your life, and really provide some some wellness um, and healing for you. So, Melvin, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you so much. So, as we get started, first question I'm going to ask is this: As business people, we're all entrepreneurs, yeah. business owners. What's the most valuable asset we have in your business? You are. You guys weren't supposed to know the answer. You're supposed to say things like money, or clients, you know, all this kind of stuff. But no, actually, you're right. You are the most important asset in your business. Now, the important thing about that is this. When you don't take care of you, your business is going to suffer. When you don't take care of the things that are going on within you, the interactions you have with your family members, with your friends, with anything that you're trying to do, it's going to suffer on some level. But when you are or when you are moving about at an optimized level and you're organized and doing things that flow well with who you are, then everything else gets impacted and affected by those things. Okay. So yes, you are the most important asset you have in your business. So keep that in mind. All right. Now, what's Reiki? You've heard of Reiki. We've all kind of talked about it a little bit here and there, but Let's jump into what Reiki is and how Reiki benefits you as a business owner. So Reiki is a Japanese word, okay? The word Rei stands for universal, okay? And the word Ki stands for life force energy. So put together, it's a Japanese word that means universal life force energy. Now, when we talk about the universe, most of what comes to mind is space and stars and sun and and all of those types of things, which, which are part of the universe, but I want you to think closely. Like, think about the relationship you have with family. They're part of the universe. The lawn that you mow is part of the universe. The trees, the grass, everything around us is part of that universe. And the interesting thing about that is this. Science is finally catching up with people like ancient medicine, men and women, you know, shamans, and anyone who's studied healing or things of that nature before the information age, they had an understanding that everything in the universe is alive. You know, literally alive. So the floor has life. These walls have life, right? So when we talk about the universal source energy, I want you to keep in mind that everything is alive, okay? Particularly when, you know, shamans, for example, I know they, they come to mind a lot because that word's kind of coming around a lot nowadays. But they have always understood that everything that we know of is not only alive, but it's interconnected. They refer to it as the web of life because you and I are all connected to each other and to other things. Now, science has figured out that with the proper microscopes, you can see these connections and see how everything works and interacts with each other. A uh, popular term recently was entanglement, that a uh, particular celebrity used, but that's actually a scientific term that deals with how the universe is interconnected and how if I affect a part of the universe where I am in a different lab, it can be measured that I affect that as well, but it can be in a different country because we're all interconnected, okay? So with universal life force energy, keep in mind that there is an energy in the universe that's alive, that's intelligent, and you and I are able to connect to that energy. Okay, making sense so far? Yeah. All right, now, talk a little bit about the history of Reiki. This gentleman here, Mikao Sui, he had studied the laying on of hands as a method of healing. It's been around for thousands of years, but this gentleman uh, was a Buddhist monk at first, and then he started studying Christianity, he went to uh, school of theology, and he understood that Jesus not only healed people through the touch, but he taught his disciples how to do it as well. So he became highly interested in how one could connect to this energy and heal other people, but then is there a way to teach it? Is there a way to get other people involved to where their students want to learn? Can they do that? So this gentleman not only discovered a method of, of how we can connect to this life force energy, but he also came up with what's known as the Utopian process that kind of is an initiation for anyone who's 
calling themselves a Reiki practitioner or a Reiki master. You have to go through a particular process with a Reiki master and they, uh, kind of like turning on the light switch, turn on the universal life force energy within the student. So Mr. Sui was the one that figured out how to do that and he started teaching um, where he was in the East and then he went and developed students all over the West Coast. Pretty phenomenal guy if you look into his life and kind of how he figured these things out. He learned how to heal himself through Reiki and really just spread like a wildfire. So he's the gentleman when you want to understand where this came from. I like to get into history because I think it's important. Okay. Now, anyone who has studied yoga, right? Uh, anyone in here familiar with the term prana in yoga? What's prana? Um, I've been told it's energy. Like life energy or just like energy? Yes, that's the best way you can explain it. Uh, yeah, energy is material. Okay. That's my explanation. That's, that's good enough. So, the yoga is another word, uh, prana, I should say, is a word and a term that's used in yoga to describe the same life force energy that I just explained with the word key. Okay. So, in yoga, their objective is to work with the universal life force energy as well. What about this? Anyone study internal martial arts like Qigong, Tai Chi, Kung Fu? Or have you ever had any acupuncture done or anything like that? They are working with the same life force energy. They just call it by a different name. They call it Qi, particularly in Chinese medicine. All right? In Japanese, they call it Qi, K-I, just like in the word Reiki. So as you can see, these are modern examples of how the application and usage of life force energy is being applied in everyday life. So it's really not a foreign concept. It's just how someone may be using it. You know, you may go to a yoga studio, I may be a Reiki practitioner, but we're talking about the exact same energy. Okay? Now, anyone ever heard this statement, we are beings of light? I'll, I'll just say I've heard this before, and when I've I've heard us refer to as beings of light. I thought the people that were talking this way were crazy. I was like, uh, how does that even work? What does that mean? I don't see lights going out of people's eyes only in movies. Right? So when they say we're beings of light, you know, is that true? What about this? I know anyone who's from Charlotte or the South have probably seen this reference or heard at least. And God said that there be light and there is light. Okay. Another indication of when, when you study this path in the Bible is full of information that deals with the energetic body and light and things of that nature. But we're going to move on. The last example that you have not seen on this one, shut this presentation down and hold everyone. Okay. What about this one? <laughs> okay. When Yoda was talking to Luke, and Yoda was trying to explain to Luke how the force works, okay, he was essentially explaining how universal life force energy works with the energetic body. Now, we can't move X-wings and things of that nature in real life. However, we can utilize the same energy if we understand what the energetic body is and how the energetic body works. And Reiki is vital to doing it. Okay. Now, as you can see here, I mentioned earlier, under the right microscope, scientists have found out that we, in fact, are made of light. There's a term called biophotons that every living organism generates. You and I do it. Uh, as you can see here, there's food items that they've been able to measure, the bioelectricity that's coming out of those, uh, DNA samples. So you name it, if you go looking, you can find that we, in fact, are beings of light, an aspect of us, a part of us that is controlling everything that we don't see within ourselves. Like, we, we don't control our heartbeat. It happens on its own. Well, the part of us that is doing that is the subtle energy body, the electric body. Okay? Now, when we talk about Reiki and working with subtle energy, I like to give lots of good examples just so you really know what we're referring to. Anyone ever played with an electromagnet when they were young? Perfect. Now, with electromagnetic energy, you have the battery here, which is pushing charged electron particles that we can't see through this wire. And it's going along this nail here, magnetizing that nail and the energy source is coming back to the battery. This is referred to as a circuit, a 
Okay. Now, if you look here, those wavy lines that are kind of going out like this, that's showing the electromagnetic field that gets generated whenever you're working with electromagnetic currents. Okay, they all produce this field. This is what scientists call it. But what that field does is it, it attracts and it repels things. Okay? Now, keep that in mind. How many of you knew that we have an electromagnetic circuit within us? Okay? Now, the way this works is our heart, our brain, and our spinal cord are utilizing energy that's coming from the universe. Okay? And it is pushing that through our autonomic, that's a big word, but our autonomic nervous system. That is the part of our nervous system that is in charge of things that we don't control, like our breathing, like when we start eating, the digestive process itself. All of those subtle things that occur, our autonomic nervous system is responsible for that. Okay? And it works just like an electromagnet. When people have talked about uh, especially in self-help and things that are here, you know, people say thoughts are things and you should think positively. Notice when we deal with this battery, there's a positive and negative side, right? So when people talk about having positive energy and positive thinking and things of that nature, and especially if you've heard of what they call the law of attraction, where they're talking about how what you think about you attract into your life, well, the reason why that works is as, a, as an electromagnetic organism, we are constantly attracting and repelling things all the time. For example, how many of you have ever thought of a person and they called you or sent you a text message? Okay. Or when you've walked into a room where there may have been an argument or something, you may not have even known, but you just walked into the room and just kind of felt that something's happening in the room. Well, that magnetic part, that electromagnetic part of you which scientists call our torus is just like the electromagnetic current that's generated from any other source. When we saw these wavy lines here going around this male, that is how that energy comes out of us. Okay? And it attracts to us what we are thinking about, what we are saying, and how we are conducting our lives. It is attracting things that match that or repelling things that don't. Okay? Now, this is how Reiki actually works because when, when you start practicing Reiki, you begin to understand how this system works, how that subtle energy is affecting the body and how you can send that energy to different points within a person or objects or animals. I, I get my animals drink Reiki all the time when they get sick and they, they get healed within five or two minutes because I understand how to work with that energy and you can work with this energy as well, okay? So now that we understand we have an energetic part of our bodies, let's talk about a little bit more how this system works. How many of you are familiar with chakras or have heard the term chakras? Anyone want to tell me what they've heard chakras mean? No one in class? I've heard it in yoga. Okay, you've heard it in yoga? All right, what the word chakra means is spinning this of light. Okay, that's the Sanskrit meaning of the word chakra. But essentially, the chakras are energy vortexes that we have within our energetic body. Okay, they're not literal things. They're not like you don't have a literal chakra that's located within your body. It's a part of your energetic body, this subtle. Okay. Now the interesting thing is, is that these chakras are where the energy from the universe comes into us and gets processed, okay? Now, when that energy comes in, depending on the conditioning of that chakra, that energy can do a number of different things. It can stalemate within your body, it can flow as it's supposed to flow, or it can move slowly or it can move too fast, okay? Now, what does that mean to you and I? For example, I'm gonna go through briefly what each chakra is, and uh, hopefully you'll begin to get a better picture of how they work. So the first chakra is called the base chakra. I'm going to call it the base chakra. Here it's labeled as the root, but I like to refer to this one as the base chakra because it is dealing with our foundation. It's located near where your reproductive organs are. So at, literally at the base of you is where this chakra is located. And it's responsible for our survival. 
is responsible for dealing with energy that are around, do we feel safe? Do we feel like our environment is secure? If you grew up and your parents were able to put you in a nice neighborhood, send you to a decent school, more than likely you don't struggle with the room shelter, as opposed to someone who was raised in poverty, had to deal with bad neighborhoods, it's going to affect you at that level of things, okay? And when that chakra is off, you may deal with um, being feelings of insecurity and things of that nature, okay? So you have the root chakra that deals with that. Then next on the list is the sacral chakra, which deals with our sexuality, our ability to receive pleasure, to not deal with feelings of guilt and shame, and it also deals with our creativity. Moving on up the list, there's the solar plexus chakra, which deals with your willpower, your ability to have confidence, and your ability to make decisions and kind of be a builder, all right? Now, these first three chakras are what I would refer to as the lower chakras. They deal with the lower aspects of our nature, just the basic stuff. You know, eating, sleeping, drinking, you know, that kind of stuff, all right? So those are just the lower level chakras. But I want to point out something about the heart chakra, which is in the middle. The heart chakra is the chakra that deals with your ability to receive love, to give love, to deal with compassion. But this chakra, amongst people who study Reiki, is referred to as the bridge, okay? And what that means by the bridge is this. This is where a person begins to transition from just regular lower level living to more of a spiritual person. Because when you deal with things like love and compassion and giving and things of that nature, those are our are, are spiritual acts. I'm not saying religious, I'm saying spiritual, okay? And when you deal with a more spiritual life, you have to have an open heart chakra, okay? Now, moving into the higher chakras, we have the throat chakra, which deals with self-expression. It deals with, can you tell your truth? Are you able to speak and express your truth, all right? And if your throat chakra is blocked, you won't be able to properly utilize it. Then you have the third eye chakra, which deals with our intuition, your ability to see and understand things uh, from an intuitive nature. For example, as a business owner, I know we've all had times where we knew we should have done business with someone. Something kept telling us, don't do it, but we did it anyway. That was your third eye chakra trying to give you a warning, and we didn't listen to it, and we made this okay? And finally, I talk about the crown chakra, which connects you to the divine, which makes you feel connected to source, to higher power, to God, whatever you want to call that. Once that chakra is open, you are able to receive spiritual insight, okay? Now, moving along, because I don't want to run out of time before I cover everything. Each chakra, I said, is in the energetic body. However, in the physical body, the chakras are aligned to the endocrine system, which deals with our hormones. So whenever we, for example, are dealing with a uh, root chakra that is not in alignment, we're going to struggle with feelings of insecurity, things of that nature, stress. What happens is that energy that's coming into you, your root chakra is sending it and overtaxing your adrenal glands. So the fight or flight response that we live in is that energy that's coming into us, and because of the condition of our chakras, which is linked to our thinking, it's sending that energy in the wrong spot. Or if you can't speak your truth, your throat chakra is blocked. You follow what I'm saying? If you struggle with love or concepts of receiving and giving love, you don't have an open heart. If you've been through like a, a serious breakthrough, breakthrough, serious breakup, it might damage your heart chakra and you may not want to love anyone else. That's where we're being affected by this energy, okay? And as we can see here, I included this chart just to further show these are how thoughts look when they're being measured. Okay, because thoughts are energy. They actually are things. They actually are alive. And over here, I have the different frequencies and vibrations of emotions. Because the physical body is nothing other than a translator of energy and vibration. When we see things with our natural eyes, our natural eyes are just translating light particles. Okay? Light vibration. When we touch things and smell things, that part of us is dealing with the physical world, we're, we're literally just translating frequency and vibration, okay? So all that to say, everything we do, every part of us, everyone we interact with, there is an energetic component that is at play that we may or may not see, but when you are aware of it, you can begin to work with it, and that's why Reiki is so important, okay? Now, how Reiki works with the energetic body? When a person 
goes to see a Reiki practitioner, the Reiki practitioner has been trained to work with universal source energy and to send that into the energetic body of the person and to begin to um, facilitate healing. For example, Reiki is not medicine, it's not like a pill. But what Reiki does do is heal the part of you that is controlling the other system that the pills work with, if that makes sense. You know, any doctor will tell you pills don't heal you. They deal with symptoms, but the body heals itself. Well, Reiki helps the body to heal itself because it is connected to your cells, the subtle part of you that is responsible for healing. Okay? So it heals the energy body by making space for healing to occur. And it's important to consider making space, all right? Because when you go to a hospital, they kind of make space for you because they surround you with staff and give you the care that you need, things of that nature. But what Reiki does is heal the energetic body, so much so that once that gets into alignment, the physical body begins to correspond to the good energy that's coming in from the universe, okay? And as I said earlier, life force energy is channeled through the city. All right? How am I doing on time? Uh, you have seven minutes. Seven minutes, perfect. All right. So what to expect during a Reiki session? When you go to have Reiki done by a person who uh, is a practitioner, more than likely you're going you're to meet with them ahead of time and you're going to have a brief conversation because you, know, you want to get to know who you're working with and they need to know who you are. Uh, but you, it's, it's not a serious thing where you're dealing out you know, your entire life. It's more to become familiar with who you are and for them to explain to you what they're going to be doing in the session. Typically in a session, the, the room is, is laid out to where a person can relax. So usually there's a massage table there for a person to lie down on the back. Uh, you will keep your clothes on, you don't have to do anything weird. But you essentially just lie down and the Reiki practitioner will go through the process of seeing where the conditions of the chakra are first, okay? There are people who can intuitively do it, and there are other ways in which a person can see where your chakras are aligned, all right? Once they determine where your chakras are aligned, that's when they will begin the process of giving you the universal life force energy. Now, the fascinating thing about that is this. If I was doing Reiki on anyone in here, and let's say that I started at your crown chakra and I was giving you the universal life force energy, but what if another part of your body needed that energy while I'm working on your crown? Well, remember I said earlier that the universe is intelligent? It knows that even though I may be here, that energy may need to go somewhere else in your body and it will send it there. I don't have to try to make it go there. So um, once you're in that relaxed state and a person is sending that flow to your chakras, they usually start at each one, they start at your crown and they go all the way down. Sometimes they go from your feet and go up to the crown. Other times, they may start in the middle, you know, just depending on what they sense and what they feel, okay? And usually after that's happened, I jumped ahead of myself, but usually after that happens, the uh, session will end and there'll be like a Q and A. You may or may not feel anything during the session. Most of the time, when I had mine done, usually I can feel the energy of the person that was giving it to me, but there are times where you may not feel anything. You may feel warmth, you may feel tingling, you may feel nothing but then notice later on you have something going on that no longer is happening in your body, okay? All right, thank you. So I'll wrap up by getting into the benefits of Reiki. It adapts to the need of the recipient, as I was just explaining. So if I'm giving you energy and we may be thinking you're dealing with one thing, that energy knows another area in your life needs to be addressed. So the energy will know and intuitively go and address that area, okay? It balances the energy in the body. Now, how many of you in here have ever had any kind of anxiety? You, you know how that feels. You know the pressure, you know that stress, all of that stuff that's going on. Even when you're sitting still, it feels like you're on a treadmill. That's your energy going out of whack. That's your chakras being thrown all over the place. <laughs> Trust me, I know how this feels when I've lived here. But, uh, when you have a Reiki session done, it will realign your chakras and help balance it out and reduce that level of anxiety and stress. Okay? Reduce the stress and help you relax, and it can remove pain and discomfort. Okay? Now, are there any questions? Thank you. <laughs>
really wants to help provide like all the services for you. So if there's a lot of members who are interested in you know having you know Reiki as a service, please let us know because that's definitely something we want to keep in mind. Um, so we can offer that you know to you as a part of your membership. So ask me all my questions. Uh, definitely you know hit up his website for all of that. And I hope you'll join us at our next Advent member talk. It's the second Tuesday of March. Um, it's going to be about like the future of work. Thanks, y'all.